Now I wanna to talk to you about how to set up the system for the first time. And I'll be talking to you how to set it up on hard drive, how to set up an SSD drive and the various performance around it. All right, so to get this set up, we're gonna be putting some hard drives in these slots to start off with. You gotta push this little tab down and then you flick this one up. And it's very hard to do the first time around, but it does actually work, don't be scared. So I'll just flick it up like that. It's a bit harsh, but you can do it. So for my first test, I'm gonna be using a really old and slow hard drive. This guy goes around 5,000 revs per minute. But the purpose of this, I wanna see how much difference does the actual CPU and connection make on the transfer speeds and stability on connecting on folders. So I'm using the slowest drive possible, but I will be using an SSD next. But first, it's this drive. So now if you look at the caddy, you'll see that you've got these little side bits. And if you pull those off, and then insert the hard drive so that the connectors point outwards. Then reconnect the panels. And on the other side. Very simple. Now we're gonna put the hard drive back in, making sure that this bit is up. There you go. And to lock it into place, just push it back up and then it's locked in there. So after a couple of minutes, once the status light starts blinking, you're ready to connect. All right, so I'm gonna fire up Bonjour Browser, which is my app of choice to figure out what's connected to my computer. I can see that there's a new device available over HTTP and its IP address is 169.254.4.136. So let's get that in the browser. QNAP also have a dedicated app called QFinder Pro, which allows you to see all the connected IP addresses that are related to QNAP on the network. And of course, you've got the IP address on the LCD panel itself. But as I've got the address, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the smart installation guide. All right, so give you as a name and a password. Select date and time. Here you can select what kind of IP address you'd like. I, I'll use the automatic one. We've got an IP address right there. Enable following OS features, so Windows, Mac, and Linux. I don't need Linux, I'm happy with Windows and Mac, so I'll proceed with that. So I've got a NAS, it's called QCairo, got a password, set up the time, and that was a really easy setup. All right, and that's it, it's finished. Go to NAS management. Boom shakalaka, we are in. When you use QNAP services, you trust us with your data. QNAP believes privacy is fundamental human right. Our products are designed to minimize the collection and use of data by using on-device processing wherever possible. Your QNAP device will never share any personal information without your permission. That's good to know. Uh, crucial part, types of data we collect from you. Um, therefore, please follow the link. This is the privacy policy. This is a lot of stuff. Um, we may collect information regarding customer activities on our website, Google Analytics, Fabric, opt-in subscription, how we process your data. This just seems generic, closely linked to the actual website. And there you go, my friends, we're in. That's our control panel, app center, and access and account settings. System has detected that your DNS server cannot reserve ho resolve hosts and some applications might not work. Control panel network and interfaces because I'm connecting directly. That's cool. So every now and then you can take snapshots of your drive and you can revert the changes. Back up your data using another NAS and finish. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a storage pool. And you select the disk. So I'm using my really old one terabyte drive. 
and because it's only one drive, I'm going to be single. If you don't plan on using all your storage at once in a volume, an alert threshold will let you know once you've hit the specified amount of the storage pool. Personally, I turn this option off. And summary, no, QNAP reserves around 70 gigabytes for each storage pool to keep it functioning healthy. That's it, create. All your data on Discord will be erased, are you sure you want to continue? Okay. We got one storage pool at the moment, and now I'm gonna add a volume from storage pool one, and I hit next, set to max. So you get asked if you wanna reserve extra space for the snapshots. I wanna continue, yes. I'm gonna specify 32K bytes per inode. That's the default version, and then you get advanced settings and encryption. Encrypting a volume with a key, each volume is locked using a particular key. So I wanna actually encrypt this drive, and I'm gonna save it so I don't need to always remember it. There you go, I've got a volume and I can start to store data by creating a shared folder in FileStation. So it's creating the default folders at the moment. Letting it finish. All right, there you go, it says status ready. So over to FileStation. And there you go. I've officially got a home. So let's open up Finder we can see that we've got a couple of options here. We've got AFP Thunderport and we've got QCairo Thunderport. So I'm gonna go into this one and connect as my username. And I'm gonna go into home and I'm gonna do my first test and I'm gonna use Blackmagic speed test and just see how fast this baby runs. So for a, a slow drive, that's a really good connection. Over a hundred, whoa! How? How is that, how is that 800 megabytes read? How is that possible? What's up with that? I've never had it that fast. That's weird. That is a weird, weird result I'm getting here. That's insanely high. So um, I don't know what that was about. I'm gonna try the other connection and see what the situation is with that. Okay, that's that's insanely fast. You got 822 megabytes read. That's uh, pretty damn good. I'll just show you by comparison. This is how fast my current drive goes. And this is using one gigabit ethernet. And yeah, it takes a little while to register. And it's about 80 megabytes, slower 60 megabytes. It's a bit all over the shop. I'm using uh, something similar to RAID 6 for this, but it's nowhere near, near those speeds. That's insane. All right, now I'm just gonna swap over to an SSD. This is a, a crucial SSD. I wanna see how fast it goes. So let's do it. Pull this one out, but without the hard drive, because I wanna see how noisy it is with just an SSD. I'm gonna pop these off. So the SSD goes in like this. And line the holes. It's got a marker here, it says 2.5 inches. And I think the holes, well, three of them are aligned and there's one currently not aligned and I'll just screw it in. Just a quick note for the SSD, I've left the top piece unattached because if you try to leave it on, it doesn't quite fit. It just bulges out a little bit. So I've just left it unattached. All right, just setting up again. Let's see how it performs with an SSD. Creating a storage pool and uh, next. Select the hard drive, next. And with this one, you get the option of SSD over provisioning and it's set to 10% here. What over provisioning is, is basically it reduces the amount of space you have on your SSD to extend the SSD's lifespan. And they've got a white paper here to explain things. And basically what they've got here is with 20% over provisioning, they're getting around 25,000 IOPS, which is in out operations uh, per second. With over provisioning set to 40%, they doubled the speeds to 50,000 IOPS. 
I'm going to say it's 10%, I'm going to go with it. But after it's done, you can change the amount. So if you start to run out of space with an SSD, you can reduce the over-provisioned amount and claim more space. So if you go into Manage and then Expand Pool, Decrease Over-provisioning, there it is. And you can change that, that number there. So it's configurable. The one thing to note is once you decrease it, you won't be able to increase it later on. So I'm just going to keep it at 10%, but just to let you know that you can utilize 100% of your SSD if you choose to wish so. But by default, they reserve a little bit of space to increase the endurance of your SSD. So looking at the storage pool, 70 gigabytes is reserved and 360 is available. And I'm going to go create a volume. All right, disk speed test. Let's see how fast it goes. That's the right drive. Stop. So we're getting around 500 megabytes a second. Read and write. So that's pretty much uh, saturated the SSD speed. That's a, a good result there. And you got ticks all over the board other than 10-bit, uh, 422. All right, so what I have here is on the left is a shared folder called HDD, which is connected onto my hard drive. And on the right is a shared folder called SSD, which is using the SSD drive. So first I'll start off with the SSD. And that is a lot faster. About a minute to transfer over 35 gigabytes. All right, now I'm gonna transfer over to the hard drive. And that one's estimates is around five minutes. So the SSD is around five times faster in real world copying performance. And for fun, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how fast it transfers files on my current NAS drive, which is a slower Atom-based NAS with an ethernet connection. So that's gonna take 20 minutes. Oh, 25 minutes. It's a bit all over the place. 23 minutes, 21 minutes, 24 minutes, 22. It's, it's a bit unreliable. I guess uh, what I'll do is I'll cancel this because I don't want to wait 20 minutes. But yeah, you can see it's a lot slower going over e Ethernet to uh, an underpowered processor. So I'm going to launch them both at the same time in the view mode. And I'll see how long it takes to load. That's pretty fast for a hard drive. I guess uh, the way macOS operates is it completes one batch of work first and then the second batch of work. So now that they are both loaded, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect them and launch them individually just to show you how fast they individually load. And let's go in here. And straight away you can see the files. And for the last file, it's taking a bit longer. There it is. Next up, I'm gonna do the SSD. And top files available. and the bottom files available. All right, in this test, I've got a Meteor example. So on my SSD first, I'm gonna go into 2018 and uh, I'm gonna sort by size actually. That folder loads really fast. And let's just load this video. It's like instant scrubbing through. Really good, I've got a hard drive. Again, 12, instant load, size, and let's go into the top video. And you can instantly start playing anyway. And I'm jumping through. Everything seems to be loading really fast. So I gotta say, it's a really good connection. I'm, I'm very impressed. And even accessing it through Wi-Fi, it's pretty fast as well, look. Loading 
the drive. Uh, instant load there, sort by size. Slightly slower, but still. You can jump through. Everything seems to be loading nice and fast. I'll give you an example of how slow it loads on my current atom based NAS. This one's over Ethernet. So, as you can see, it takes quite a while just to get something on the screen. Um, I'm just going to go to the biggest file. Notice that little spinny thing, just constantly spinning. And this is over Ethernet, not Wi Fi. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And of course, let me know what NAS drive you have or what NAS drive you're planning to get. All right, it's time to get some Thunderbolt speed.